everybody. Welcome to Chin Fat. In this episode, I'm continuing going over the toolbar inside of Premiere Pro. And in this specific episode, I'm going to be covering the shape tools here. One is the rectangle tool, one is the ellipse tool, and the other one is a polygon tool. Another one that goes along with that here is going to be the pen tool as well, which we're going to cover as far as graphics are concerned. So if you hold down your mouse on this, you'll notice this has this little tiny arrow in the bottom right hand corner, which means as a drop down menu, you simply left click on it, hold down, and it will expand this menu here. And now you can choose the rectangle tool, ellipse tool, or the polygon tool. So these tools are mostly made to create shapes on screen. And with this, I've just made a simple little graphic here where I play through the beginning of this video. Something like that, creating these rectangular shapes. You can create basically any shape you want to between using all these different tools here, rectangle, ellipse, polygon, and the pen tool. So if we drop down and grab the rectangle tool and you move this onto your program monitor here, you can click and drag and it will automatically make a shape. Uh, that makes the shape and it makes the outline based on previous ones that I've made here. It's a good idea to go under window, go to workspaces and arrange for captions and graphics here because we're going to be working on graphics. The graphics opens up this essential graphics panel on the side which helps you to manipulate or change uh, the attributes of the shapes and or text that you create on screen. So now that I've created this shape here, I've got it selected on my timeline and I've got the shape layer selected shape layer selected inside of my uh, graphics file here. So things to note here is you can go down to the fill item here and you can change the color uh, simply by bringing on the color picker here and you can just basically change the shade uh, to red, yellow, green, whatever color you want to change it to, change the saturation, change the luminance uh, level of the, the color there uh, and hit OK. And then down here you have different options to show a stroke which is an outline around uh, the edge of the graphic that you made. If you uncheck that you can see that stroke that's being made there. Uh, you can increase the size of it and see and, and change the color of it to make whatever color that you want. Or you can even use drop shadow instead. You can put a drop shadow on this, make it dark, change the distance of the drop shadow, and now you have that kind of faint shadow showing on the background. And you can change the opacity of that as well. So you have all these features to change your shapes here. And this one is specifically the rectangle shape. While you're on that shape tool, if you click and drag, it will add another layer to this file specifically down here. Uh, just a couple things. If you hold down the shift key while you're dragging, it's going to make a perfect square out of it. It'll, it'll lock the perspective to create a perfect square. Same as circles. If you go up and grab the ellipse tool here and you click and drag, it will start making a circle and you can make this kind of an oblong oval like that. But if you hold down the shift key, it will constrain it to be this perfect circle. I've added three different shapes here to my graphic file that's down here on my timeline. And by the way, this file down here has all those shapes that I've added to, and, and here are the individual layers. You have to select the graphic and it will show the individual layers up here under the edit uh, layout. Sometimes if you're under browse here, I, unintentionally you won't see your graphics. You can go to edit and it will bring up your graphics right, right there that you've been creating. Uh, so these all interact as one different, one uh, big file here. Basically, if I, if I select this as a treats this just like a video where you can hit like command D and it adds a dissolve to both sides. Now if I play through this, that will fade in and out. My weird, weird graphics that have nothing on them right there. But but uh, of course you have to build these into graphics that you want to have with, uh, with text in them or whatever you want to do. If you want to do text, you can do that on the same layer here. You can move your mouse up over here. You can grab the text tool, which is T, and you can click down here and then you can start typing I like stuff. That graphic makes a lot of sense. You can extend it and expand this, make it a larger file. You have all the controls, and now you see uh, that text in here with the shape layers as well. So other shapes that you can create down here, we did the circle. You can do a polygon and click and drag. Right now, it's set as a three-point polygon. So right now, this is a triangle, and you can go over to the attributes here. I've got the, the, the graphic layer selected. I've got the shape layer selected here as well, and I'm under the edit tool. Uh, down here, you can see that this is right now is on three point polygon. You can grab this and change it. From here, you can change how many points this has. You can click on the number there and type in a number. Do like eight points there. Now we have an octagon. You can do six points, have a hexagon, and so on. So you make these different shapes here. You can change the width and height for the shape of the polygon here. You can do width and both width and height. And then you also have this beveled edge uh, feature here to make the edges more rounded. And you also have these specific options on your rectangle and circles as well. If you select a circle, you've got a width and height sliders to change the shape there. And you do them as well on the rectangle. And then you also have the rounded edges you can create on these as well. When we've got a graphics layer here, 
We also have access to the pen tool. The pen tool will do some different things as well. Right now, if you're under the graphic and you select the pen tool, you can create custom shapes. And this is very much like Photoshop where you basically uh, click and click and click and make these nodes. And then eventually you'll uh, full, you'll complete the circuit here and that creates a full uh, shape there. So now I have that shape, the one that I've custom made. This just is kind of this hard edged blob here. Uh, but if you want to make another one, let's delete this one right here. Uh, you can click and drag and this is a Bezier curve there. So this is the middle point of the node there. And then this uh, represents a curve, this Bezier line right there. If you click and drag, you can see that this is creating a rounded shape here. So you can basically create almost any type of shape that you want to in here to create these graphics. You can grab these nodes and you can make these different shapes. Now I just look like I got an amorphous blob here. But another feature that you also have is anytime you select one of these uh, shapes that you've created, you can use these as a mask rather than have them filled in with a color. You can also use them as a mask. Well, let's show what I mean by that. So I'm going to delete my circle one here. I'm going to delete my square one here. And I've got, I'm left with this uh, shape down here. In fact, this should create like a rectangular shape. Select the rectangle and drag and create a rectangular shape here. Now that's actually covering the text, but I've got that on top of the text and that's very intentional. We can get rid of the drop shadow and we don't need a stroke on it for this because what we're going to use it for is we're going to use it as a mask with the, with the shape here. So I check mark that and the shape apparently disappears. Now what you're going to do is if you grab this thing and you move it, notice it, it acts as a mask to wipe the text off the screen. So we can animate this if we want this to like text to write on. We can use these shapes to basically write the text onto the screen. So we're going to animate that mask there so this wipes onto the screen here. So I've got my graphics selected. Uh, over here I'm going to select my shape layer because that's what I'm going to animate. And now I'm going to go over to my effect controls here and this is where you do the animation is over on this side. So with all that selected I've got the uh, I've got my graphics selected. I've got the shape layer selected and I go over to effect controls and arrow this down here and we're going to go to position. Now position is going to change where that mask is on screen. You've got your horizontal slide right there and then you've got your vertical slide right here. Let's say we want to wipe that on sideways. Uh, so I'm going to do a horizontal slide here. So I'm going to go to the very beginning with the, if you are inside of your effect controls here uh, with, the, with it highlighted and you hit the home key, it will go to the beginning of the clip. If you're in your timeline, it will go to the beginning of the timeline. But right now I'm in my effect controls and hitting home takes it to the beginning. And I'm going to uh, turn on my keyframing for this for that layer, for that specific layer, for my shape layer. And that's what, where I'm at right here. And then I'm going to play into this just a little bit. And now I'm going to add a new keyframe right here. So I hit that and I've got two keyframes, one at the beginning, one at the, uh, and one right here in the timeline, a couple seconds in. Uh, so this is the keyframe I want. This is where I want to add on that keyframe. I want it revealed. So I'm going to go back to my previous keyframe here, uh, land on this keyframe. You use these arrows to land on the keyframes and land on the home keyframe. And now I'm going to grab my horizontal and I'm going to wipe this off until it barely disappears right there. And now this will animate from off of the text to on the text right here. As I play through this, it wipes on the screen there. You can also do this to text as well. You can make the text animate on rather than the, have the shape layer animate. So if I undo, get it back to where it was, we can select the text. So I'm going to go on and select the text that I like stuff here. And now I'm, I got that highlighted in my controls, in my effect controls window, arrow this down. And we're going to do the same thing. Go to the position attributes of my text layer here. I can say, this is where I might want my text to be on screen. So I can click that and add a click, turn that uh, keyframer on and have a keyframe added there. And now I'm going to hit the home key, go to the beginning. And now I'm just going to either add a keyframe or I can start animating and it will add a keyframe for me at this position. But let's add a keyframe. And now I'm going to have this wipe on uh, vertically like this. So now that's off the screen, and now as I play it, it animates onto the screen. And if you don't like the speed, if you want to do faster, you can grab this and drag it closer. There you go. And if you want to have it ease in, you can right click on this and just go to temporal interpolation and say ease in to that keyframe there. It'll now uh, won't be such a like a like a one frame stop for the text. Now it will like uh, kind of feather it into to a stop there. So let's look at that. See, it's more gradual when it comes to a stop there. So, all right, guys. Well, that's it for this episode. That's what the rectangle ellipse tool and polygon tool, in addition to the pen tool up here when you're in the graphics mode. So thanks for watching Shinfat. And if you have any questions or comments, let me know.